In this video, we're going to look at some ways to multiply integers. So starting with the chip model, uh, use integer chips to represent and evaluate 3 times 5. So we think of the first number as the number of groups and the second number as the number in each group. And we'll also uh, begin to use the word copies. So this is the number of copies and this is the size of the copies. So this is 3 copies of size 5 or 3 copies of 5. Okay. So for this first one, this is our copy size, one copy of five, and then we want them to make three copies of five. You see the total number of chips is 15, and the result is positive. In the next one, we say three copies of negative five. So first we'll make one copy of negative 5, this is one copy, and then we want to make three copies, or three groups, and that gives us negative 15. Okay. And there are different ways to deal with the other two types of problems when the number of copies is negative. So how do you take a negative copy? Okay, And we haven't officially discussed the commutative property yet. So here we're going to say this can be interpreted as the opposite of three groups of five. So we can take this first one. Here was our three groups of five. And if you have them flip the chips over to the other side, that's taking the opposite. So we think of taking the opposite in chip land as flipping the chips. Okay, And similarly, so three, negative three copies is flip these chips. Here if we have negative three copies of negative five, we'd flip these chips and we'd have positive 15. Okay. So those are our introductory ways of thinking of this. Then we use number lines. Okay. And we use the idea of taking the opposite as the reflection that we looked at before. So, let me just get this ready. So here are our four problem types, and again, it's good to present all four types together so they could look for patterns and compare and contrast. So three copies of five, <coughs> here's zero. So we have five, 10, and 15 and that's where they'd make their copies. One, two, three, and we'd get 15. Um, a lot of them will write this as five copies of three or five groups of three, so they'll count by three, six, nine, 12, 15. Now, in general, this isn't the end of the world. We know that multiplication is commutative, okay? So these results are the same, but when we start talking about fractions, we're always going to refer to the first number as the number of copies. So three copies of five or three groups of five. Okay, So we want them to start associating the second number with the size of the groups. So I would say you're right that this is equivalent, but we're going to think of this as this is the number of copies, this is the size of the copies or groups. Uh, so here I have the negative number first. So instead, we're going to think of this as the opposite of three groups of five. So they will take the three groups of five, and then they take the opposite by reflecting. Okay. Here we have three groups of negative five. So we're going to go one, negative five, negative 10, negative 15. So we'll see that's negative. And then the opposite of three groups of negative five reflecting will give them positive 5. And then it's good to ask them to see patterns. Okay. If you have a, um, a product that's positive and negative, one is positive, one is negative, notice we have negative results, and two positives or two negatives are positive result results. Please try to get them to say when you have the product of and later when you have the quotient of because again, they'll extend this idea to adding and subtracting, which is incorrect. Okay, Sometimes it's correct, so they think they're doing the right thing, and then other times 
it's not and they're doing the wrong thing. So make sure to try to use in your language and stress with them that we are talking about the operation of multiplication. So when you multiply two numbers and the signs are different, the result is negative. Not just a negative or two negatives is a positive. That can confuse them later. Okay. Looking at dividing, we're going to look at two different um, chip models and then we're going to use the opposite idea. So 12 divided by 4, um, we talk about these words, an important word is also the quotient, is the result when you divide. Uh, we have them write these using both a division symbol and a fraction symbol to help them acclimate to uh, the fraction representation. And remember, one way of thinking about a fraction is division. So if you have 12 over 4, you could think of 12 dividing by 4. And they're going to see later on that there's lots of other ways to think about fractions, but the quotient model is one of them, and we want them to start to become used to it. Okay, So we start with the div dividend, which is 12. The group size is 4. And then we're going to circle divisor size groups. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, they can represent this with chips, and then you might want to have them practice writing it on paper. So if they write it symbolically, then they can use it when they don't have chips on a test. So we want groups of size 4, and there are three groups of size 4. Okay. The next one we have them do is uh, negative 12 divided by negative 4. Notice the symmetry here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's our 12 negative chips. We want groups of size negative 4. Okay, and there's three such groups. Okay, so getting them to see this connection will show them the similarities between these. And then when the signs are different, uh, we talk about finding the opposite of the result. Okay, so negative 12 divided by 4. We could think of this. Our result is 3, and we take the opposite of our result, which is negative 3. And again here, the result is 3. The opposite of that is negative 3. Okay, there's ways to do, I think, this one with chips, but it could be pretty complex and make things worse rather than better. Okay. Here, just like we connected addition and subtraction, we want them to start to see connections between multiplications and division. So we write the missing factor model. Okay, So we write this as how many groups of 4 are in 12. Again, later on, we're going to use copies instead of groups. But groups are good when we're, uh, when we're working with whole numbers or integers. Okay. This would be how many groups of negative 4 are in negative 12. And the missing factor, I set up the math AS problem so it would accept either question mark times 4 equals 12. Sorry, that's multiplication. Or 4 times question mark e equals 12 because we know they're equivalent. Um, but officially, since we're asking how many groups of, and we talked about how we want the first factor to be our number of groups, Okay, um, try to get them to write it this way with the question mark first. And throughout this whole course, we're not going to use x's or variables um, in the infrequent places where we want an unknown in an equation like this, we'll use a question mark. Okay, So this, uh, again, connecting division and multiplication, how one of them is just a missing factor. And also, you can use this idea to get them to see the patterns um, between the sign results between multiplication and division, and why negative divided by negative is positive, uh, negative times a negative is positive, etc. And finally, we do the same thing with algorithms. We have numbers uh, larger than single digits. Tell them to use the standard algorithm to find the general result. And then we want them to see that basically anytime you're finding any of these products, regardless of sign, 
you're basically multiplying these numbers and then the sign depends on the signs of the numbers you're multiplying. So whatever 14 times 23 is, I don't feel like figuring it out. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Okay? And again, clumping them together like this, giving them the same numbers with all the different sign combinations helps them build patterns. And then we do the same thing for division. We alternate the signs and we also show them some fraction representations. Okay. So I hope this helps with your general understanding for unit two and some ideas you want to focus on. Please let me know if you have any questions.